I am Karen Bhatia speaking with Miguel Cotto here in Puerto Rico. Miguel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me here. And Miguel, we know in your great career, you are a six-time world champion, four different divisions. You achieved so much in boxing. And I know obviously you started boxing here in Puerto Rico. When you started, did you think you could have achieved what you did in boxing? When I started uh, as a boxer, I start with uh, a lot of weight on me, on myself. I want to be healthier and looks better. And I fall in love with boxing. You certainly fell in love with boxing and I think fans around the world fell in love with your style of boxing, your heart, your commitment. And obviously the Puerto Rican fans were very passionate. Um, what was your relationship like with the Puerto Rican fans throughout the years? You know, I, I'm, I'm not a, a loud person. I'm not a person who talk a lot, but I'm 100% Puerto Rican. I know why they felt. Every time I, I step on the ring, and I know they support my career the whole time. And in terms of your inspirations, Puerto Rican fighters that came before you, who inspired you on the way up? You know, I became, I came from 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 a family of boxers. My two older brothers, they were boxers before me. My cousin, and all I wanted to do was spend time with them and just be like them. They they were my motivation in boxing. And, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is a is a is a, is a huge uh, boxing tradition country, and Gomez, Benitez, Trinidad, they motivate me too. You mentioned the great Tito Trinidad, and I know, and symbolically, the torch was passed to you in terms of the number one Puerto Rican fighter in terms of popularity. Um, what was that responsibility like for you and that role of, of being the most popular fighter from Puerto Rico? I never think that, that I was the most popular boxer here in Puerto Rico. I just tried to do my work the best way possible for me, my kids, my wife, my family. And that was, the, that was my real motivation. That was your motivation, but in terms of popularity, uh, the fans supported you, they, they loved you. Um, there hasn't been a fighter from Puerto Rico after you that's been able to necessarily achieve that same fan base, that same stardom. Why do you think that is? What is the challenge for, for the new generation of Puerto Rican fighters? You have to be, uh, you have to have a commitment with yourself, you know? You have to put a lot of things on the table to just to, to to try to be the boxes that you want to be and all you have to do is work harder than anybody now speaking of your upbringing i know that when you were 12 years old you faced Ivan calderon who was 17 years old at the time so you you had the youth advantage so to speak um, when I spoke to Ivan about that fight, he said that he won that fight three to two. Now I want to know your take. What, what happened in that fight? <laughs> he was a, a better boxer in that, in that time than me, and he used his skills uh, better than me, and he won the fight. Now, the size difference is certainly there now. I know that you campaigned for a long time at welterweight. You went up to 154 pounds. Uh, Ivan was 105, 108, definitely smaller. So that's what happened when you were 12 and he was 17. What would happen if you guys fought in your prime? <laughs> no, you know, uh, I was a heavier guy than Ivan. And this fight happened when, when we were, uh, when I was young, he was not too young, but, uh, happen when when it had to happen. Yeah. And I know that now your relationship with Yvonne, you guys are very good friends. Uh, there's a family connection. So what is your relationship like now with him? We spent uh, four years in the Puerto Rican national team. Yeah. 
representing Puerto Rico in different countries. And our relationship became stronger until today. What do you think about this new generation of, of Puerto Rican fighters and who stands out in your mind? They have a, the future in their hands. They have to be a lot of putting everything on the line for the future, you know? And the guy who risks everything for what they believe is going to be the best for them. That's the guy who's going to be Nest, the, the new face of Puerto Rican boxing. Certainly, the, the fighter that could emulate your work ethic uh, that you had throughout your career um, will absolutely be successful. Now, what, what is it about the, the Puerto Rican culture that really rallies around its fighters? And also, the, the government has put together places that young kids can go to live, to train, um, so there's a lot of support here, not only from fans, but also from the government, right? It's a, we are a boxing tradition uh, country. And for decades, we are been uh, having boxers all around the world, representing Puerto Rico, putting our, our name, the highest place. And I believe that we, born as a Puerto Rican with that on, on our system. The way you fought, I mean, you never gave the fans a bad fight. Um, you always came forward. You always gave it your absolute all in the ring. And in a way, uh, that's symbolic of, of where you're from in terms of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico has also had a lot of resilience, obviously with Hurricane Maria in 2017. What was that experience like for you to go through the hurricane, your family, and how has Puerto Rico bounced back? Maria was our worst storm uh, situation. Uh, was tough, but in those moments, Puerto Ricans came together. They worked together, and now we're back. We are, uh, you know, in Puerto Rico um, um, the best shape possible just to keep living. Puerto Rico came back from the hurricane. It's, it's rebuilding. There's a lot of new modern architecture. Um, and in a way, this was very similar to your career. Um, anytime that you took a loss or knocked down, you came back and you fought some of the best fighters in our generation, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Canelo Alvarez. You had many big wins against huge names like Shane Mosley, uh, Zab Judah, many others. Um, you, obviously, the the rivalry with Antonio Margarito. When you look back at your storied career, I mean, what were some of the fights or moments that really stood out to you um, when you look back? You know, the fight with uh, Mosley, uh, Margarito, uh, Canelo, Pacquiao. It was it was. Who were really good fights. Obviously, a big part of your legacy was the Antonio Margarito first fight and then coming back, I think, the resilience you showed yep. in that comeback. And obviously, that struck a chord with a lot of people. Uh, and as we can see here, I mean, it's been uh, put on the wall here for everyone to see. Um, when you see that, what, what goes through your head? So it's a... Uh picture of one of the best moments of my career. When you look back at, at that rivalry, you and, and Margarito, I mean, what, what sticks out? I know the, the first fight in terms of Margarito's raps in that situation, you took that very personally as you should have because, I mean, he put your health, your family's life, everyone at stake in, in terms of that, right? I didn't, after that, I didn't feel any kind of respect for him, for him, but uh, I took the second one just to show to the world what happened in the first one. You had such resiliency uh, in that rematch and you came back and you were so dominant in that second fight. Um, I think you inspired a lot of people who maybe have gone through things like that where they felt like it was an unfair situation and they were you were able to right that wrong. Um, 
for you personally, how did it feel? Uh, it was just my, my moment to show the people what they did in our first, uh, in our first fight. And I enjoy it from the beginning to end. And speaking of resiliency, I mean, it's, it's almost symbolic of your journey. And then of course, Puerto Rico, we spoke about the hurricane in 2017. And now we're in this amazing modern facility. Um, so this is really a testament to the resiliency of the Puerto Rican people, right? You know, uh, we are warriors uh, in our lives. And this is the, our moment to tell the, the world that we passed through Maria and we, we stand again. Miguel Cotto, thank you so much. Oh, thank you.